Good afternoon and welcome to the March meeting of the Pitt County Planning Board. We welcome those that are in our audience and those that have joined us uh, on TV. So appreciate your being here. At this time, Ms. Tab, would you call the roll, please? Brett Austin. Present. Tom Brown. Present. Dan Buck. Here. David Davenport. Here. Thompson Forbes. Present. Lyman Hardy. Here. John Landrum. Present. Steve Little. Here. And Charles McDonald. Present. Mr. Chairman, we received notice that R.J. Hamby will not be present tonight. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. And again, I appreciate the board being in attendance as we go into our uh, agenda tonight. At this time, though, would you please stand with me as Mr. Lyman Hardy leads us in prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Mr. Charles McGowan. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful day. We ask, Lord, if you to be with this board tonight as the decisions they have to make concerning the citizens of Big County give us wisdom and knowledge to make the right decision. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, the chair would uh, entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes of our February 15th meeting. So moved. Second. I have, so a, Don Brown. I have a motion by not Don Brown and a second by Lyman Hardy that we approve the minutes of the last meeting. Any corrections or acknowledgments? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? It is, the motion is passed. I don't have any names listed right now, but at this time, I will open the, for public addresses to the board. Are there any public addresses to the board? Hearing none, I do close this public address to the board at this particular time. Administrative matters. Mr. Roots. Good evening, everyone. I uh, just wanted to make you aware as this listed in your agenda package that one of our members has offered her resignation. Uh, Tab is already working with our clerk to the Board of Commissioners to have that position filled. So maybe by your next meeting, we will have Madison's uh, position filled and you'll be back to a full board compliment. So it's underway. Good Thank you. you. And we do appreciate the service that Madison did provide for us while she was here. So we thank her for that. As we get into our rezoning request, I believe, uh, Ben, you're going to be sharing with us, right? Good evening, everybody. Uh, we do have several rezoning requests this evening. The first one has been submitted by Shannon Hodges. This is a request to rezone 9.28 of her acres of property located um, on the southern side of US 13. It's east of intersection, east of its intersection with Moy Turner Road. Um, it's parcel number 68999, and the request is to rezone from rural agricultural to general commercial conditional district to allow operation of a self-storage warehouse facility. Location of the uh, subject property, you see it's right there on US 13, kind of between the town of Farmville <coughs> and the city of Greenville, um, just right before that cutoff where 13 heads towards Green County. A few pictures of the subject property. Uh, this is the site looking at it from US 13. This is looking west towards the town of Farmville, and then looking back east towards Greenville. The, some adjacent pictures of adjacent property. This is um, agricultural use right across the street from the property. This is a single wide that's located on the subject property currently. And then this is an adjacent residence just west of the subject property, um, and that is the residence of the applicant. You see here, the uh, comprehensive land use plan does designate this property as um, rural residential agricultural. This uh, designation is intended to include low density, residential, single family site built and manufactured homes, agricultural, forestry, churches, very limited commercial, office or public and institutional uses meeting locational criteria. 
The locational criteria for non-residential uses within this land category would include frontage and access to a major state highway or secondary road, location at a major intersection, proximity to similar uses, and spatial separation from non-compatible uses such as existing residential development, and land uses in this category uh, would be developed on private septic tank systems. The existing land uses in the area, you see a majority of agricultural or undeve undeveloped land as well as some residential um, in the immediate area. And the zoning for the area is all RA currently rural agricultural. The general commercial zoning district is primarily intended to accommodate a range of retail, service, office, limited wholesale, and moderate density multifamily residential uses in areas that have access to major thoroughfares and the necessary utilities to support such development. And the conditional zoning district allows for the approval of a proposal for a specific use with reasonable conditions to assure the compatibility of the proposed use with the use and enjoyment of surrounding properties. And again, the proposed use for this request is a self-storage warehouse facility. The sketch plan that was submitted with the application, you see we've highlighted the area proposed for rezoning um, with the red dash there. The proposed drive and parking area and the proposed storage buildings um, at the site. Planning staff does find that this request is consistent with the Pitt County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. The area requested for rezoning is designated as rural residential and agricultural on the future land use map, and there are existing general commercial zone properties and commercial land uses to the east of the subject property near Ballard's Crossroads. <clears throat> and planning staff also finds that this request is reasonable and is in the public interest because the site has frontage and access to a major state highway US 13. In addition, the proposed use will not generate a significant amount of traffic and has spatial separation from existing residential land uses in the vicinity. So staff does recommend approval of the request with the following conditions. No zoning compliance permit shall be issued until a site plan prepared in accordance with Appendix B of the zoning ordinance is submitted to Pitt County Planning for a review and approval. A landscaping plan is required and the property shall be screened from any adjacent residential use and public road rights away by a 10 foot wide landscape buffer yard planted in accordance with the requirements of section 10H of, 10H of the zoning ordinance. Repar required parking spaces, access drives, and loading areas shall be paved and maintained with concrete, asphalt, or similar material of sufficient weight and thickness and consistency to support anticipated traffic volumes and weights. A soil erosion and sedimentation control plan prepared by an engineer shall be submitted for development of this property that results in land disturbance over one acre. <coughs> the site must comply with the Pitt County Stormwater Ordinance for nutrient control. Nutrient loading and peak flow calculations shall be reviewed and approved prior to any improvements involving more than one half acre. Must comply with any emergency management requirements for fire protection. And they must obtain all required permits from Pitt County inspections to, to occupy any proposed structures and comply with any applicable environmental health requirements for wastewater disposal. And finally, they must obtain a driveway permit from NCDOT and comply with all requirements for access to the subject property. Uh, the board will now uh, entertain public comments. Um, after that, the planning board will make a recommendation to the board of commissioners who will, uh, is currently scheduled to hold a public hearing at their April 3rd meeting at 6 o'clock. At this time, I will turn it over to you, Chairman, for the public comments. Thank you, Ben. And I notice we do have some that would like to speak toward this, so at this time I do open this board up to public comments. And I believe the first name that I have on, on my list is Charles Vanderford. If you'll come to the mic and just let me remind all of our speakers tonight that we are limited to three minutes. When you come to the mic, that you state your name and your address to the board. All right. Good afternoon to you. My name is Charles Vanderford. I live at 6722. Let me recorrect there. I have a dwelling <coughs> uh, land ownership at right across the road, 6722 US 13, farm from North Carolina. Um, I'm a disabled veteran. I've been with the Department of Correction, probation parole for 26 years. I'm looking to retire at this dwelling that I currently own. I have lived there on and off the last 50 years. It's always been residential agriculture I'm looking to keep it that way so I oppose the business being there um, why do I want to oppose it in short I have safety concerns a business of this size being right across from where I plan to have my family my friends come over 
this is just not no any run-of-the-mill small business uh, fruit stand being out there. Uh, you're going to have crime. I haven't seen any proposal to address that. Traffic. There's a curve right there in the dwelling, uh, right there, a uh, major curve. Uh, there's been major accidents right there coming in and out of my driveway. I have an 84-year-old mother that lives right beside me or right beside the property there. She can't even get the post office to have the mail delivered to her house because the postmaster said it's too dangerous for their drivers to go in and out of the driveway. All right, so it's dangerous there. No turn lane proposal, none of that's been addressed. Traffic is going to increase. You look how many units were proposed there. 24-hour operation, that's a lot of in and out. A lot of in and out traffic. The environment, as far as I've been told for the last 50 years, that's been a wetland area. I don't even know how it can be proposed to be done this way anyway. All right. The last thing I will leave with respectfully, would you want a mini storage building beside your residence that you have owned the last 50 years and that you plan to retire at. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Benford. You have to forgive me. Mr. Linwood? 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 Members of the board, thank you for the this opportunity tonight. First thing I would like to do. Would you mind stating your name and oh, address? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Linwood Stroud. I'm with Stroud Engineering. I'm the engineer representing uh, Shannon Hodges, and I will be doing the site plan and the and the other engineering task associated with the property. Uh, there was a concern by the previous speaker about traffic. We con I contacted uh, DOT to get their. A projection of the traffic this type of facility would generate peak hour traffic p.m. 12 trips in one hour six in six out according to the current zoning we could develop 10 residential lots on this parcel 10 residential lots would generate 11 total trips seven in and four out so it's approximately the same thing uh, regarding the wetlands we have had wetlands delineated on the property by a qualified soil scientist. None of the development that we are proposing is within the wetlands. We are avoiding the wetlands, so it, all, it will all be on upland. Uh, secure, it'll be a fence facility. It'll have a gate. It'll have security cameras. So, you know, and it is in compliance with the <coughs> land use plan for limited business. So this is this is type of business is about the most limited you can get and still be commercial. I will refer the rest of my time to uh, Mrs. Hodges unless you have questions. First picker was against. I would like I would like to offer one other comment that I had yes, forgotten sir. about. But I did meet with uh, DOT on the site regarding the driveway entrance. Uh, Gene Pittman, he was concerned about the site distance. But when out on the site at the location of the driveway entrance of this property, the site distance was well over 1,200 feet, which was in compliance with DOT requirements for site distance for an entrance for a facility of this nature. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Trout. And you mentioned. Uh, Ms. Hodges, I think she's requested right now. She'd like to go last, and right now I have a Mr. Humphrey okay. that would like to speak. Good evening, board members. Um, I'm Blaine Humphrey. I own my wife and I own a lot that is directly across the street um, from the Hodges property. And I want to speak on behalf of my mother, who also owns the property directly across the street. Um, I am against it. I think the world of, of Shannon and Stacy, but this is not um, a good fit for this area. Um, I could see doing it in the Ballard's Crossroad area, which is what the uh, rural commercial district was set up for. 
I remember 20 years ago when I was sitting on that side of the board and we were going through this process, this was a primary goal of what that was. Um, I also gave you a handout, kind of briefly go over what I had come up with. I know Mr. Stroud had addressed the traffic count. Um, I guess based on what I've researched, uh, using a 10 by 20 unit, um, at a minimum, you could probably come up with 606 units for the property. And if you go by the Institute of Traffic Engineers, um, 8th or 10th edition, we could go with the 10th edition, which is I've included both in the packet that I gave you. Um, you're looking at probably a minimum of 103 trips per day based on that information. Um, I know a firm, I also work for an engineering firm, and recent designs by our firm um, had about 36% of the acreage developed with units, which is, I think I had figured roughly 30 and 40, but going with the minimum, um, it would probably be more than that. Um, and it would also be a 60% increase in impervious area. Um, as far as site distance, I've also put in here, you know, Charles had expressed a concern about the curvature of the road, and that is a concern because I, I know I and my mom, when we're pulling out of her driveway, you really got to watch what you're doing. Um, but if, let's say the site distance that I put in here, 836 to 863 feet, and I've also put pictures <laughs> in here about where the driveway would be, and the distance, site distance, what I would consider would be clear site distance. And you could be looking at a reaction time of a little less than 10 seconds. And I think we know nowadays with distracted drivers, that could be an issue. Um, as far as, I know it's said in the, um, in the slide before about uh, US 13, that is acceptable, but if you look at a major thoroughfare that is trying to move traffic through an urban area and not a res I mean a, a rural agricultural area. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Humphrey. Ms. Shannon Hodges. Hello, my name is Shannon Hodges, and I just wanted to thank you for your time and consideration for this project. Um, if you look at this, can I see this? Can y'all see that map? Okay, awesome. Okay. So if you look at the black arrow, this is that little red and black dot is my house, which I think Ben showed you in the previous slide that he did. The storage facility is here in the red. The first white line to the left is Charles Vanderford's mother, which is 612 feet from the driveway. The one to the right of that is the Humphrey um, Blaine, who just spoke, 1,250 feet. Miss Humphrey is the next white mark, which is 1,360 feet from there. The, one, the next one is 840, which is, I think, a rental trailer. Um, and the next one is 1,865 feet, and the one below that is the lady who lives behind us, 1,213 feet. And if you look at those white lines, there is a wood line in between all of those properties except for that little trailer. So they can't really, I mean, yes, the facility is going to be large and it's going to be there, but we live next door, and I love all of them, and I'm going to make sure that looks nice. Um, this is our home, which will be nice, right next to the facility. If you look at the second picture, you're looking down where the facility would be in that wood line, which would be cleared, and the facility would be there. And Ben showed you those other pictures across the street. And as you can see, there's you can't see any of the houses that are near there. And that last, this one up here that says 1,250 feet, that's where Blaine's property is. Um, you know, I love them, but they've been planning to build there for 20 years since I built my house there, and they've not built yet. Um, the next slide is all of Pitt County storage facilities in the area. 
If you see the yellow star, that is where this facility would be, which is very much needed in that rural area. Um, you know, so it's definitely needed there. Um, the next uh, slide here is non-residential properties between Farmville and Greenville. You see the yellow is our storage facility. <clears throat> and between Farmville and Greenville, all of these red dots are not necessarily commercial, but they are businesses. And I've gone here and I've shown you um, if you're familiar with that area, right here is the duck through. They just built that. They're getting ready. I think you're going to be talking about rezoning here for the property right next to that for commercial. Um, there's auto sales lot there. Um, there's 264 auto sales, Flanagan Field Airport there. Several churches on this road. The red dot is the is where I live now. Uh, where you see TD sales, that's in a, a major curve as well and Ballard's Crossroads Grill, also Andrew's um, landscaping business. Um, going up further towards Farmville, there's a medical products facility and three other churches and another, another um, thing. I'm sorry. So here's some pictures and then just to finish up, we plan on having cameras, fencing, gate with entry code, landscaping. It will match our current home, which will be tan and kind of black or brown. And then the building um, will have shrub, shrubbery and a black um, fence on the front with chain on the sides. And we do live next door and we do care about the way it looks. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Hodges. Do you have any questions for me? And that's what I'm fixing to ask. I'm okay. just asking Mr. Chair, the board. Mr. Chairman, there's one other person that would like to speak. Oh. One more? Two more. Two more. Okay. Let me see what, thank you. You have to bear with me. I'm on the oxygen, and when I get a little nervous, I'll start coughing. But please bear with me. My name is Ted Vanford, and I had gotten up a petition of uh, people, landowners in the area, to sign it. Uh, I didn't make a copy for everybody. I'm sorry. And if you'll state your address, yeah. please, yes. so they'll know. Uh, 6748 U.S. 13 is the property that I own. <clears throat> which is right across from Shannon and Stacy's. And my mom stays right next to that. And, you know, I've been there my whole life except when I was in the Navy. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> basically, I, I don't think it's a good idea. When they purchased the land, you'll see the deed. They agreed not to do anything commercial <clears throat> on the property. It's right there in the D, but now they changed their mind. So, you know, they're going against what they agreed to to start with. with. <clears throat> and um, I would say, would you want it next to your house? That's the big thing. You know, with my mom, traffic's bad. And like I say, they agreed in the deed, and I have a map with the landowners that have agreed to not want it and highlighted the land and you see the area that it's, it's roughly 14 different landowners so thank you very much thank mr. you mr Chairman. Danford. can i ask him a question mr danford mr vanford mr danford would you come back to the mic just a minute if you know, when did the Hodges acquire the property? When did they get it? Uh, roughly about 2007 or 8. And when you say they, they agreed in their deed to not put a commercial use? It, it's in the deed. I got. Well, I don't have the deed. Okay. So. Can I see that? <clears throat> who, who gave them the deed? I well, mean, did you give them, did they buy it from you? Is what no, they bought it from the tower heirs. So were you a party to a contract? No, you could, it's public record. You can look it up. I'm Mr. sorry, I didn't mean to. Mr. Chairman, it says says in this deed, which I assume is genuine, 
that this property will not be used. It will be used only for farmland and residential purposes. I mean, that's a date. I mean, that's a date restriction. Anyway. Any other questions for Mr. Danford? Thank you for now, sir. <clears throat> I believe I had one other speaker, and then I'm going to be asking someone to come back, okay? So. My name is Gavin Vanderford. I'm My sorry? My address Gavin Vanderford. Yeah. I'm the son of Monica and Ted Vanderford. Um, I'm a volunteer with Bill Arthur and Farmville Fire Department and I work for the City of Kenton Fire Department. And in regards to traffic, um, I didn't really come prepared, but on my phone, I have department statistics about traffic collisions, specifically regarding the area. From Moy Turnage to Wesley Church Road, we've had a total of We've had 10 vehicle fires. I'm trying to find a specific number. And we've had about 253 motor vehicle accidents within that stretch of road. And if you compare, compare year statistics each year, it increases by at least 5%. And that's understandable considering how much the city of Greenville and the town of Farmville are growing. But I just wanted to add out there the statistics of all the motor vehicle accidents going out there. And Shannon wanted to say about how far back off the road they live, which is true. But, you know, not just thinking about our family or, you know, our friends. Think about all the kids and all the people that live up and down that road that I see all the time. And, you know, I just, I'm with the rest of the group. I just don't, traffic's terrible out there. I've seen it firsthand and I see it almost every other month. And I just, I don't think an increase of flow through that area would be a smart idea, but Thank you for your time. Thank you for Mr. Mr. Vander. I failed to get your address. What was your address? 3180 Ballard's Crossroads Road. Okay. Thank you, sir. I have one question. Okay. The, the yes, stats sir. that you quoted, that's an annual basis? Yes, sir. Thank you. Six o'clock. Okay. To our knowledge, do we have any other speakers? Yes, ma'am, I was hoping you would, because I was going to ask you to come back. First, do you have any questions? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Have you read the deed that you got? I had actually forgotten about that. So when I bought that property in 2003, 2002, I think, it was also the tire um, estate across, which is where Ms. Humphrey bought. Okay. Those restrictive covenants ran with her land and my land, but she had hers removed, and I just didn't do it because it was just our section. We were the only section left of that whole estate, and those people have died, you know, um, and it just it's our piece. It's our little piece. We're, we control it, so if there's something I have to do to change that or whatever, I can do that because we're the ones who own it, but... Um, you know, she had that agreement too, and she had it removed. It's well, but you don't deny that you have an agreement I've got to ask you. that that land that you acquired will always be used for residential or farmland, right? And I mean, I had honestly that. forgotten about it because it wasn't supposed to have double wides or trailers on it either, and right. she put a double wide on hers, and and then we put a trailer on ours. It's just our land, so we own it. We'll we will own it forever, probably. <clears throat> Well, as a member of this board, I'm not persuaded by any arguments against you, 
except that one. And that's serious because that land, I view that as being restricted and everybody who buys land should be entitled to rely on that until that covenant is released, I believe. Is there anything else you want to speak to? I mean, that property is ours. I mean, we, I mean, that could be removed easily. But wasn't the original grant, was it 44 acres? I don't remember. How, how much was the tire deed for? Do you know what it calls for? Can you tell me, David? Uh, that's what I'm looking at. <clears throat> Looks like it's just for that 14.3 acres. Yeah, it's just our property, our piece. Right. It did run with the whole piece of tire tire estate though, and they had it removed, and I, I mean I could have it removed. Well, who else owns land that came from that 14 the acres? They did had they, it removed. Do they agree with your use? They had it removed, their use on their piece, they had it removed. So there's 14 acres left of the tire of the ran. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there some others here that wanted to speak? I think so. I just wanted to say. I need you to come, you have to need come to, come to the mic, sir. Yeah. indicated that when mom and dad bought the property that it, that restriction was in their deed also it is not and I think you I mean when mom and dad signed the deed it was not in there and I got my part from them so I think if you look up the deed for that piece no restrictions were in that just wanted to clarify that Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do yeah. have one question. question. Mr. Um, if you were to develop your lot, um, which I understand is not developed right now, um, where House. would you locate your driveway? It would be probably, there's, can you pull up that? lot that we own is that flag shaped lot mm -hmm. and that driveway would be right there I'm, where it I'm meets. sorry we cannot see we that. cannot see that one there he goes hmm? where'd he go no oh. way <laughs> that's the parcel right there that I own and our driveway would be right here so we're looking at the very top edge of the monitor is your property yes yeah and then your your driveway would come enter the highway directly yes at what point there so basically in the curve as well right in the curve thank you thank you sir Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman. yes sir i got a question for our attorney that's where i'm going to Where does the board stand as far as this coming up about it being in the deed and everything? Do we still? So I'll, I'll do my best to answer the question. So um, I, before you, wouldn't try to opine on the enforceability or not of this uh, matter. Uh, be uh, not be wise for me to do. I haven't looked at anything. Um, what I would say is. Um, enforceability of covenants um, there can be a whole host of things um, they may there may not be a party that exists that can enforce there may or may not um, there may sometimes covenants um, you you waive enforceability if you overlook certain things over a certain period of time I'm not saying any of that applies here I'm saying I, I don't know um, what I would say for this board is um, it's certainly a, a private property matter um, the county would have no enforceability as far as whether or not these covenant is valid um, with that being said if it's something that this board thinks is somehow relevant or pertinent to your decision 
you could give it whatever weight you think's appropriate. And um, I understand that that may not be a direct answer, um, but that's about as best as I can offer. Happy to try to answer any follow-up questions um, that you or other members may have based off that. I got a question. Would you agree that if we gave it that we have the option of giving the applicant the uh, the ability to resolve any question? Because we, as a board, we don't want to enforce an unenforceable document and hurt somebody else in the process. But as it stands right now, I agree with you. I don't know who else has, I don't know who else could possibly have an interest, but we are looking at a date that says it won't be used for the use that she says she wants to use it for. And I certainly agree that that's waivable by everybody that does have an interest, but I can't sit here tonight and say that it has been. I, I would agree that I cannot tell you if it's right. been waived or not. Right. Um, but our duties will come back to us as a board as far as what we're looking at up to the point that we're talking about uh, a covenant, a restrictive covenant, if you would, if we thought that's what it was. But right now, our duties are to pass in on this particular issue to approve or deny, but with the criteria that's been required, it has met the requirements and staff has recommended approval. Staff certainly recommends approval. I don't know if James wants to give his opinion on the covenant, not from a legal matter, but sure. how you could consider it. Um, that's why I kind of couch it in. Um, it may be something this board thinks is relevant to your analysis. I mean, the, the members who are on our subcommittee heard, you are in a legislative decision right now. You have a whole kind of a whole universe of things that you can consider um, to your own personal desires. You're ultimately deciding whether or not you think this is a good idea or not. And somehow, if that covenant factors into that one way or the other, for your own personal reasons, um, you can give it whatever weight you think is appropriate. Um, and I don't, like I said, I don't know if James wants to speak to um, his opinion on it as, as far as how you reach your decision, but that's uh, my legal take for you. And so, I, so in saying that then, of course right now, staff has recommended approval and if we were to take our vote right now and we uh, move to approve and move forward, that's one issue. If we as a board decide that we're going to vote to deny this, I believe the next question that's going to be asked of us from either you or James is you need to give us a reason for why we're denying it. That, that is true if, if uh, to the planning staff has recommended approval and they have based a consistency statement and a reason with statement based off their recommendation. So if y'all were in favor of their recommendation, you typically adopt that statement as prepared. If you go against their recommendation and, and recommend denial, you need to adopt your own consistency statement. Um, and if you'd like to talk about reasonableness, you can. Um, you, you as the planning board aren't required to do reasonableness. The governing board is. So um, does that answer your question, Mr. The, Blue, Mr. the governing board being the commissioners, right? That's correct, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yes, sir. You Hang on just a second. Let me recognize, change just before you do, let me recognize one more speaker, okay? My name is Monica Vandeford. Ted Vandeford's my husband. Um, I was just going to say that I have personal knowledge of the property. I've done a title search on it, and the only restrictions were on the Hodges 14 acres. There were none on the Humphreys or the, the remainder of the original farm. We have spoken to Tire Family Farms, Inc., or LLC, whatever they are. They are still in business, and they did not give any permission to lift any restrictions. So I just wanted to pass that along. Thank you, ma'am. Board members, any other questions or comments at this time before I ask Mr. Rhodes to see if he has any comments? Mr. Rhodes? I 
really don't have anything to add to Jordan's, uh, but I will um, just reiterate this is a private restriction. Um, Mr. McGlawhorn is very familiar with this. Uh, ben and I have just been in court about a similar situation, and just so the board is aware, staff and legal staff, we do not research these private restrictions because it's unenforceable by us. If we are made aware of it, we would advise the private property owners. But again, it can be factored into your decision, your legislative decision. You could even consider this as a condition to this conditional district rezoning that that be resolved. So that's just another option for you to consider tonight if the deed restriction is a major issue for your consideration. So I'll lay that out for you. Thank you, sir. Ben, any comments? I have nothing else. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I'll just say one more thing, Mr. Chairman. And that, that is that the, that route. perhaps if the Hodges are the only ones, which we don't know because we, we, have, we haven't checked the title, but relying on what she said, then they're the only ones that could be hurt by the violation, except if they deed this property to somebody else, that person's going to be hurt by it, perhaps. But um, so what I'm saying is if there are not any remaining owners of the original grant, then, you know, I don't have any problem with it. Okay. So. so at this point, I need to close the public comments. Thank you. And then the chair will entertain a motion. And again, taking into consideration what we've heard from our county attorney, but also from Mr. Rhodes, he enlightened me with just with a statement right then that he made. So the chair will entertain a motion on this uh, agenda item. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hardy. I recommend that we take the board's recommendation with the stipulation that she has that uh, removed from her deed. Okay. You've heard the motion. Second. And I have a second. The motion being that we approve it, this plant with the state your motion again, Mr. Hardy. Mr. Hardy. State your motion again. Uh, we we uh, accept staff's recommendation to approve the property with stipulation that they had that flaws on the title removed about no you know no commercial property. And that is the motion, and you agree to that as a second. Uh, I haven't yet. No, what, what, no, I've, I've got a second. I, right I have seconded it. Um, they they signed that deed in good faith, yeah. and expect them to withhold that you know uphold that. Come in, sir. Uh, what would be the, the time frame on this? Don't know that we go to that depth. Uh, Sorry, what was the question? What, what the would be the frame. time frame on this? How, how if that's the condition that's added, that will be presented to the commissioners along with the other conditions of the approval that we went through. Um, <coughs> I, was, I would assume before development may begin, is that? Yeah, so before we can issue a permit. Then. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other comments before we vote? It's been seconded. It's been second. it's motion and second. <coughs> motion by Mr. Hardy, second by Mr. Austin. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by raising of the right hand. All opposed, like sign. John, did you oppose? No. The motion is approved. Um, and we will move this one forward with that stipulation. Okay. Ben, I believe you have agenda number, item number seven. Yes, sir. I did just want to reiterate for everybody in attendance that that will go before the April 3rd Board of Commissioners Board meeting Commission. at 6 o'clock.
second rezoning this evening um, has been submitted by F and A Construction LLC. Uh, this is a request to rezone 7.16 acres of property um, located on the western side of NC11, south of its intersection with NC30. It's parcel number 72622 from rural agricultural to general commercial. And unlike the one we just heard and some of the recent rezonings, this is not a conditional district, so it is just from RA to a straight general commercial zoning district. Location map you see again is located just south of the town of Bethel. Um, on NC11, south of its intersection with NC30. A couple of site pictures of the property. Um, you see this uh, is kind of overgrown, but this is the site from NC11. And I will mention when we did our field trip, our planning board field trip on Monday, um, this property has been cleared since then, so it does look a little bit different. They did go through and bush hog the entire parcel. This is looking north back towards the town of Bethel. Looking south back towards Greenville. This is a commercial property just south of the proposed rezoning area. This is owned by the same folks who did um, submit the application and own the parcel we're looking at. Again, an existing commercial um, parcel. This is agricultural land kind of adjacent and across the highway from the subject property. This is a commercial use up just north of the subject property. It's in the town of Bethel's ETJ. It's a solar farm company. And then there is a residence directly across the highway. The comprehensive land use plan does designate this area as rural, agri rural residential and ag. I did want to note that um, in our, EP our Envision Pitt County 2045 plan that we've been reviewing and the Board of Commissioners is going to be reviewing next week and holding a public hearing, did kind of pull down that commercial. Um, as you see now, almost all of it is outside of that commercial area shown here. But if that plan is adopted, um, as will be presented to them, we did kind of pull down some of that commercial um, in this area. Uh, the rural residential agricultural area or uh, designation is intended to include low density residential single family site built and manufactured homes agriculture forestry churches very limited commercial office or public institutional uses meeting locational criteria um, again locational criteria for non-residential uses within this land use category would include frontage and access to a major state highway or secondary road location at a major intersection, proximity to similar uses, and spatial separation from non-compatible uses such as existing residential development, um, and uses will have to develop on private septic tank systems. Existing uses, I kind of just touched on this, but um, we have the one commercial just south of it and the residents directly across the highway. Otherwise, everything in this area in the county's jurisdiction is um, undeveloped or agricultural. The zoning in the area, besides that one commercial use, everything is zoned rural agricultural. And the general commercial zoning district is primarily intended to accommodate a range of retail, service, office, limited wholesale, and moderate density multifamily residential uses in areas that have access to major thoroughfares and the necessary utilities to support such development. The property is located with the highway corridor overlay district, which will require extra screening and buffering um, for that overlay in the zoning ordinance. Planning staff does find that this request is consistent with the uh, comprehensive land use plan. The area requested for rezoning is designated as rural residential agricultural on the future land use map and the subject property is adjacent to an existing commercially zoned property. In addition, there are existing commercial land uses within close proximity to the subject property. Planning staff also finds that this request is reasonable and is in the public interest due to the site's location along with major thoroughfare and C11 North and the location of other existing general commercial zone properties within close proximity to the site. Additionally, the subject property is located within the highway corridor overlay district and any proposed commercial use will be required to provide additional screening and buffering from surrounding residential uses. Staff does recommend approval of the request. Um, and again, uh, public comments will be entertained by the planning board. The board will make a recommendation to the board of commissioners who will hold a public hearing at their April 3rd meeting. And I will turn it over to you, Chairman, for public comment. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat what you said about uh, how our, our 2045 plan mixed into this? What, what was it you said that happened? Yes, sir. So our comprehensive land use plan, the future land use map shown here, it has a little bubble coming south of the town of Bethel mm -hmm. in our proposed future land use map that the commissioners will be hearing and this board has been involved with. That bubble kind of drops further south to include more property because we see that kind of as almost like a commercial node, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, and if this was submitted in six months, I, my, the point was that 
currently it's in that rural residential ag, but um, if that plan is approved and that map is approved as it presented, there it's more commercial there and it would be designated as that commercial. Okay. I did just want to note that since that's something we've been working on. Okay. 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 At this time, we will open this meeting up to public comments on item number seven, the FNA construction, rezoning. Uh, I don't have anyone listed uh, on my list for speakers. Is there anyone? If not, at this time I'll close this public comment session. Comments from the board? The, board, the chair will entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion that we approve. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Davenport that we approve with a second by Mr. Hardy. Uh, any comments? All in favor of the motion, let it be raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. The motion carries. We do grant conditional approval. Mr. Gooby. Sir, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, give Ben just a few minutes break here uh, and present this request. It's a rezoning by Phil Lewis. Uh, the request is rezoned approximately 10 acres of his property. Uh, it's two parcels, 68711 and 08760. It's located at the northwestern corner at the intersection of US 13 and Bell Arthur Road, and the request is to go from rural residential to general commercial. Uh, it's location map here you see that the site is is just west of the bypass uh, it's it's just basically one parcel over from the the on-ramp and the, or the interchange uh, right there at the corner of Bell Arthur Road to the north uh, Davenport Farm Road comes in from the south and creates that intersection uh, this is the view of the site from 13 you see it's primarily just agricultural land now uh, there's also a house on the corner which I'll show in just a second uh, this is a view back towards the north on Bell Arthur Road. And this is on Bell Arthur Road if you're looking back towards that intersection with US 13. And you can see uh, kind of in the background the Davenport Farm Road overpass that goes over the bypass. And to the left is a new convenience store that's been built there uh, last year. Uh, this is a view back to the east as if you're heading back towards Greenville on 13. You can see the overpass from the Southwest Bypass there. Uh, in the background and this would be looking to the west if, if you're heading towards Farmville. So this this side is just up, is, is a couple miles up the road from the Hodges rezoning but again this is more closer to that interchange and in the, in the bypass. This is the house that I mentioned that's on the property currently um, so it will also be included in the the commercial designation. It's our understanding that that won't, once it's rezoned, that won't be used for residential purposes anymore, that they're going to convert that into something else. And then, as I mentioned, there's a, the new convenience store that's located across the street on the other corner of uh, the duck through. And then there's one uh, residence across 13 uh, from this property. And then this is uh, just another adjacent property that's the other corner of Davenport Farm Road, which you see in the background. Uh, the Southwest Bypass Land Use Plan does designate it as neighborhood <coughs> commercial. So you see that whole area is, in, is included in that pink color, which is the neighborhood commercial. Uh, that designation per that plan says it's comprised of small scale commercial development in rural or neighborhood areas. And that typically would include convenience, uh, retail, restaurants, and some offices. Uh, existing land use, you see there, there are some some larger lot residential uses to the east and then some to the north, or sorry, to the west and then some to the north on Bell Arthur. I also have Emerywood Subdivision, which is on the south on the other side of 13. And that red, you can see some, some red there uh, to the, that's the new duck through. And then back towards Greenville, there's some more commercial. And then to the west, there's more commercial down here where um, the old silver bullet, so, silver bullet used to be. I think it's now a sweepstakes. Um, and there's also a car dealership down that way. Uh, zoning, the property is currently zoned RR. You see the red next to it, that's the new duck through. That actually came before this board about two years ago. Uh, this, this site is about double what that site was. It's, uh, that was about five acres. This one again is 10. Uh, that commercial district is intended to accommodate a range of retail, service, office, uh, wholesale, moderate density, multifamily, residential uses. Uh, in those areas that have access to major thoroughfares and utilities to support that development. 
Uh, the property is also located in the Southwest Bypass Highway Quarter overlay, so there it will be subject to some additional screening and buffering requirements uh, based off that being in that overlay. <clears throat> Staff does find that the request is consistent with the land use plan, uh, given its proximity to the interchange, uh, as well as its designation as neighborhood commercial on the future land use map. I uh, also find the request is reasonable and in the public interest because it is located in proximity to that interchange. Uh, it's also located in an area that's appropriate or has been determined to be appropriate by that plan for a small scale commercial development. And again, also it will be subject to the requirements of the highway quarter overlay uh, screening and buffering along both the adjoining property lines and the rights of way. So with that, Mr. Chair, we do recommend approval of the request. I'd like to entertain public comments. Before they make a recommendation, this will also go to the commissioners on April 3rd. Thank you, sir. At this time, uh, the meeting will be open to public comments on this particular agenda item number eight. Are there any speakers? I don't show any again that have signed up to speak. So this time I will close this uh, public comment session and look to the board for any comments or a motion. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move, I move the approval of the petition. Motion to approve by Mr. McGlohorn. Second. A second by Mr. Hardy. Any comments before we vote? All in favor of that motion, let it be known by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Grant approval. Conditional approval. <coughs> and back again for our final rezoning request this evening. The applicant, Marjorie Elks LLC, uh, has submitted a request to rezone 1.41 acres of their property. That's parcel number 84321. It's located on the southern corner of the intersection of Page Road and Mills Road, and the request is to rezone from Rural Agricultural Conditional District to Rural Residential. The site location you see is just south of the city of Greenville, off of NC43, just east of Hollywood Crossroads and DH Colony High School. Some site pictures of the property. Um, you see they're currently just vacant agricultural. There's some trees. They um, I just want to give a brief background, actually. Um, in 2015, this property was rezoned to RA Conditional District for the approval of a uh, landscaping business, BT Carowin. You may be familiar with that. So with that rezoning, it was for the entire parcel. At this point in time, they are looking to rezone back to RR, as I mentioned. So since that rezoning in 2015 was conditional, they have to come through this process. Um, just didn't want to touch on that. This is uh, looking back west to Mill, uh, Highwood Crossroads and then looking east down Mills Road. A couple of residents across the street, as well as a manufactured home park across the street. And as I mentioned, there is a commercial landscaping business um, located kind of towards the rear of the property. The side area, you see the uh, land use plan, the future land use map does designate this as suburban residential. The suburban residential designation is intended to include residential land uses, including single family and manufactured home subdivisions and manufactured home parks at densities of one to four dwelling units per acre. Limited multifamily, commercial, office, light industrial, and public institutional uses meeting locational criteria. And land designated as suburban residential is distinguished by the greater potential for development and the inclusion of a broader range of land uses. Uh, locational criteria um, for these uses is, uh, for this category would include frontage and access to a major state highway or secondary road, location at a major intersection, proximity to similar uses, and spatial separation from non-compatible uses, such as existing residential development. And again, the existing land uses you see um, here that kind of the red area toward the, re the rear of that property is um, zone commercial for that or commercial use for that business, as well as just the residences and the other undeveloped agricultural uses in the area. The zoning map, you see everything out there is pretty much rural residential except for some commercial uses on 43. The dark green, um, this is a subject property that was again rezoned in 2015 for that conditional district. The owner actually came back a few years ago and rezoned this flag lot back to RR and kind of went through the same process that we're going through this evening. Um, and again, we are looking at this um, front area along Mills Road tonight. The rural residential district is primarily intended to accommodate low density, single family residential uses and their associated 
supporting public and institutional uses in areas that generally do not have access to public or community water and sewer systems. Planning staff does find that this request is consistent with the Pitt County Comprehensive Land Use Plan because the site meets locational criteria for the proposed zoning district within the suburban residential land use category. In addition, the site is located ad adjacent to existing rural residential zoned properties. And staff also finds that this request is reasonable and is in the public interest because the majority of the surrounding properties are similarly zoned as rural residential. In addition, the property was previously zoned rural residential prior to being rezoned to rural agricultural conditional district in 2015. This request will restore the property's previous zoning designation. Staff does recommend approval. Um, and again, comments will be entertained prior to uh, making recommendations to the commissioners for their April 3rd public hearing. Our meeting is now open to public comments, and I do have one, Mr. Stephen Spruill, who would like to speak. Good evening, board members. My name is Steve Spruill. My address is 1204 East Wright Road in Greenville. Uh, as Ben pointed out, this uh, request is consistent with the land use plan, and we're kind of just going back to what it was before. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll do my best to try to answer them. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Spruill from the board? Thank you, sir. I do close the public uh, comments. And at this time, what is the pleasure of the board? I have a motion that we accept. <coughs> we have a motion for conditional approval by Mr. Don Brown. I have a second. Second. I have a second by Mr. Hardy. Any comments from the board? Speak up. Speak up. All in favor of the motion, let me know by saying aye. Or, aye. I'm sorry, raising the right hand. Be consistent, Steve. All opposed, like saying. The motion is passed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ben, I believe you earned your keep tonight, didn't you? And yesterday, Monday. All right, Mr. Chair. Um, we do have two text amendments for you tonight. Uh, one is a request from a citizen. And the other is a staff-initiated request. Uh, so we'll start with the one from the citizens, from Mr. George L. Shaver, Jr. Uh, his request was to amend the Pitt County Zoning Ordinance to allow commercial automobile parking and storage of equipment in the RA Zoning District. Uh, when we received the request, we reviewed it. Um, and what Mr. Shaver is, what he would like to do is to have a place where he can park semi-trucks and other sort of heavy machinery. Uh, and so we, when we were reviewing the request, we didn't feel like it was necessarily appropriate to amend that commercial automobile parking, which is just a permitted use in the general commercial and heavy commercial districts. We felt like it was more appropriate to just give it its own use. Um, and so we, we've developed a, what we call a, or what we created, proposing to create is oversized vehicle parking commercial. Uh, and we're also proposing some specific standards for this use. And so we'll go through that pretty quickly. Uh, the first is to amend table 5-1, the list of permitted uses. And that would be to actually add the use to the ordinance. Um, as you see, we, we're considering it, we're calling it oversized vehicle parking. Uh, it would be permitted with a conditional district in the RA district rather than permitting it outright. Um, and the reasoning for that is because these trucks and this equipment can be loud. You have diesel motors. You have large, heavy machinery coming in and out. If it's in, a, if it's surrounded by, you know, RA is a residential district, and so if you're surrounded by homes, uh, it may have some noise impacts. May have, uh, you might have issues with the traffic, with, you know, um, just in, just any kind of negative impact that could be associated with just having these types of vehicles and equipment nearby to these homes. Um, so we felt like there's been a lot of discussion about context sensitivity over the last couple months. Uh, so we felt like it was just most appropriate that this would be done as a conditional district. Um, so just like with sand mines and some of these other uses that you were hearing now that uh, used to be special use permits, this would this type of use would we're proposing would come before this board and then the county commissioners also. So then uh, in the general commercial and heavy commercial districts as well as the industrial districts, uh, it would be permitted with the development standards. So they would still have to meet the standards that we're proposing, 
but they wouldn't necessarily have to go through a public hearing if it's zoned for that already. So the standards we're proposing, again, where it's required um, would be to approve it as a conditional zoning district uh, in the RA district permitted by right of development standards in those commercial and industrial districts. Uh, a use separation where any oversized vehicle should be parked a minimum of 50 feet uh, from an adjoining residentially zoned property, not counting the property that it's on if it's in the RA district. So if it's, in, if it's already zoned RA, obviously we wouldn't have it set back off itself. But, um, and then a minimum of 100 feet from any residence, church, school, or public institution. The um, minimum area we're proposing to require for, for these facilities to be two acres. Uh, we're also proposing to require screening uh, from adjoining properties by a buffer yard. Uh, we do require that already in the ordinance, so it'd be a 10-foot buffer yard with some combination of trees and shrubs for screening. Uh, proposing security fencing, minimum of six feet in height along the entire perimeter of the facility. And then some restrictions on the noise. So any noise should be uh, in compliance with the requirements of the county's noise ordinance and should not disrupt any adjacent land uses. Uh, in those residential districts, we're also proposing to add that any vehicles that are parked uh, should not remain idling or generate any other noise while parked that would otherwise disrupt those adjacent land uses. And the restriction on that would be between those hours of 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. And that's also consistent with hours in the noise ordinance. The noise ordinance itself, uh, between 10 a.m. and 7, or 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., it drops down the threshold for noise. So there's a lower threshold for how loud something can be. And so that is consistent with, with those times. Uh, also requiring that parking services would not be required to be paved necessarily, uh, but they would have to be improved, uh, graded, drained, stabilized, and constructed with an all-weather surface, whether it's gravel or crush and run, uh, to min help minimize dust and erosion. And then also in those residential districts, prohibiting some, some activities like keeping uh, junk cars, keeping scrap materials on the property, uh, also, fuel sales, we want to make sure this, this doesn't necessarily turn into a truck stop. It's just a parking area for these types of vehicles. Uh, and then also any automotive repair services. So we also need to add some working definitions uh, for these uses. Again, as I mentioned, the, use, the ordinance already has commercial automobile parking, but it doesn't define what that is. So we're proposing to define that as essentially uh, Temporary parking, hourly, daily, or monthly contract or fee basis, but it'd be for passenger vehicles. Uh, so pretty much any normal vehicle designed to move people as opposed to goods or services. Um, and then for oversized vehicle parking, that would be for um, any vehicle or combination of vehicles, including trailers, which is seized 20 feet in length, 7 feet in width, or 8 feet in height. And examples of that would include um, semi-trucks and trailers, whether they're hitched or unhitched. Uh, box trucks, moving vans, campers, RVs, trailer boats, and also heavy equipment or machinery. So we've talked with Mr. Shaver, and we feel like that would kind of help suit his needs as well for, for what he's proposing. Uh, so with that, we feel like the proposed amendments are consistent with the goals of the comprehensive land use plan to maintain an effective uh, jurisdiction-wide land use program. And staff does recommend appro approval of the amendments with a proposed immediate effective date. And so just like with the commissioners, uh, there's, or with the rezoning request, the commissioners are, are scheduled to hear this on April 3rd. And with that, Mr. Chair, would like to take public comments. I know Mr. Shaver's here, and I think he's got some other folks that might want to speak as well as mine, too. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Again, we will open our meeting up to public comments. And um, Mr. Shaver, would you come to the mic? Give us your name and address, please, sir. My name is George Shaver. I live at 1211 Eastwood Lane in Winterville. I currently operate a parking facility in Winterville for commercial trucks. Um, we have about 60 trucks that park there. There's a dire need um, for our local truck drivers to have somewhere to park. A lot of our truck drivers live in uh, small residential areas and the cities have passed ordinances. Greenville, Aiden, Winterville, and Farmville has ordinances that does not allow them to park in those areas. We started our parking lot three years ago. We filled up within three months. I have nobody that ever leaves, so I have no more space. Mr. Savage owns 21 acres on the Pocosin Road where he used to store 1,000 containers and over 300 trailers. 
Um, since he sold his company, that land is vacant, so we decided to start parking trucks out there. We will have aerial lights uh, once we get permitted. We will have camera systems. Um, there was a couple things I didn't understand that he showed on the height. Um, these trucks are 13.6 at least. I didn't, un I didn't, I didn't see what his height measurements were. I just want to make sure we do meet within the requirements. Um, but I had letters from all the chiefs of police. I have a letter from the Greenville chief, the Aiden chief, the Winterville chief. I also have a petition here of 88 signatures from people that live in the area that this is a much needed project. Um, and I just ask for your support. Thank you for your time. Any questions for Mr. Schaefer while he's here? And we do not allow trucks to park out there and run their engines. These are all local residents that have, they stay gone, some of them stay gone two or three days, some of them stay gone six <coughs> weeks. They come home, they need somewhere to park. That's all we're asking. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Mr. Tommy Savage. Good evening. Hey. Tommy Savage, 1180 Coaston Road. I've been running a business there 53 years. It's one and a quarter mile from my business to where they storage lot is. I bought that land 15 years ago and somewhere you have a picture of the land when it was loaded. I would like the board to see that. If I could, I just want to I just want to say this this is not a partial specific request. That's right. This is an amendment to the ordinance, so we're not prepared to speak on an individual parcel tonight. We are simply re requesting or, or amending the ordinance to allow this type of use that would then come back for a, a site-specific request. So I don't have the pictures of the property itself because we're not, that's not what this request is for. Okay. So see what you were saying a while ago, I only understood half of it. And a lot of this stuff, I'm a little country boy, raised in the pine woods. That's it. I started out with nothing, and I have grown. And we don't want it rezoned. There's no need of it. The county is begging for a place to park the trucks. We can't do it out. Everything you people have got on Everything you eat tonight, this building, every piece of it came in on the truck. We can't do without trucks. And Mr. Ted Saul told me that Greenville has an ordinance. You can't park. But he told me, what am I supposed to do with it? Man comes in to bring a load of goods for the county. He's got nowhere to park. I can't tell him to go home. So we are providing a badly needed service. I have serviced the community for 53 years, right out there on that road. And that service has run from Virginia to South Carolina to Greensboro to out in the ocean to go out there and work on stuff on boats. So I've been servicing in this county basically all my life. I'm 80 years old. I started that business in 69. I've been there ever since. With no help from anybody but Don Langston at the bank. He's the one. And what it boils down to is we're trying to provide a service that will enhance the camp, that will help the camp. Uh, they're talking about the zoning and so forth. The county is full of businesses that are operating according to these people illegally. They operate the business out of the house, out of the backyard, or whatever. The county's full of 
right down to the coast road. It starts on 903 and goes to Green County. There is, I think I counted today, six or seven businesses that operate out of the back hills. And, so and I'm not trying to hurt these people. I don't kill what they do. I honestly don't kill. But we took a piece of scrap wood land. You showed a, when the, somebody showed a picture of a piece that had been cut down over there by Bethel. That tree is probably 10, 12 foot tall. That's what that farm looked like when I bought it. Good deal, Mr. Savage. Thank you, sir. I appreciate all your comments and we appreciate the, the service that you're providing. But in this particular instance tonight, what we're trying to do and what we've got to do tonight is to approve this verbiage that will go to the county commissioners as we see that that's going to happen. And then for what you're talking about right now, someone will be bringing that back to us in the future. Okay. So we won't be what making any decisions on that particular plan tonight. May I ask what do you mean by verbiage? Uh, the revision that we're talking about, adding to our ordinance the words that he just read to us just a moment okay. ago. See, I didn't understand half of what he was talking about or saying. Yep. Like I said, I'm just a little boy coming out in the pine woods over there. And I've been there all my life. So and I do believe... Some terms y'all use, I don't know what they are. Yep. And I do believe that once you see us complete our work, that it will be to your advantage. I do appreciate it. And we appreciate you. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Time. And so forth, and hope working. Good deal. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Eric. Um, yes, sir. If, if we, we um, approve a set of ground rules, which I understand is what you're proposing, will there be any opportunity in the site specific uh, application because it's a conditional use? to deal with either lighting or anything that is somehow unique to a neighborhood? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. It is. That's that's sort of the reason for why we're requesting it to be a conditional district. It's because, I you know, I, we, we, we completely agree with Mr. Shaver. There is a need for this right. in, in the county. Um, we, our staff has been contacted probably not just by Mr. Shaver, but probably three or four other people who want to do this same type of use in the county. It just happens he's the one that has the most immediate need and right. is proceeding with this request. Um, and the area where he's located, his neighbors may not have an issue with it, but again, this is a countywide regulation. This is intended to apply to any business that wants to open in the RA district. So while his neighbors may not have a problem, the next guy that comes in in another part of the county in RA, their neighbors may not want it and may have an issue with it. And where he, he has rules where he doesn't allow them to idle overnight, those folks may not. And so we want to make sure that everybody is sort of under the same rules and is, is following the same regulations. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, sir. Is it eight feet or is it 14 feet? Well, the way the definition reads, it says, these, in, these vehicles include, including trailers, which exceeds 20 feet in length, 7 feet in width, or 8 feet in height. So basically, if it's taller than 8 feet in height, we would consider an oversized vehicle and it would fall under this requirement. Now, it's not to say they couldn't park anything smaller than that, but that's just a general guideline that we would use to say, this is larger than just a, an SUV or even a, a big old jacked up pickup truck. You know, some of those trucks with the lifts on them, they're probably over eight feet in height themselves. Yeah. But they are, they are a passenger vehicle. They're not necessarily oversized. So this is just more of a guideline to go by. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. For Mr. Gooby and, and for everybody, really, I'm trying to envision uh, in, in, in the use separation area uh, a, a, essentially a truck stop being 100 feet from my house or my church or my children's school I'm just I'm not sure if that's enough I, I don't I, re I really don't know I, I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm asking everybody does that seem like enough from your house to be the whole idea I agree with 100% I know truck drivers personally who were having this problem so I, I agree with it I'm just I'm just I mean we want to consider is that 
distance enough from your house, from your doorstep. Right. Again, this is just a proposal. This is what we have proposed. Um, this board is free. If, if you feel like the 100 feet is not enough, you certainly decide to, to change it or increase it. Um, that's just, like I said, that was just our staff recommendation. And it's somewhat consistent with some of the other requirements in the ordinance, particularly like with um, solar farms. There's, there's restrictions for the inverters, for how close they can be to the property line, but then also how far they have to be from a house. And so it's somewhat consistent with that type of use. Um, so, but, it, but certainly if the board feels like that's not sufficient, um, we'd be welcome to hear what y'all's recommendations are. That was a good point. That, that's some of the things I'm not, I'm not sure of. Um, if everybody else seems that that is sufficient, that's what I mean. Sir? May I speak again, please? Yes, sir, for two minutes. All right. Uh, come, to the, come to the mic, please, sir. Three of utilities are going to install our light system, and they're putting lights up that will shatter the houses. In other words, they want all the light, just like these right here. you got a blinder on these lights. The lights they're going to put up for us will be the same way. They'll have blinders on. And I'm going to say at least 90% of the neighbors have privacy fences up. And from their privacy fence is on the line. And the tail end of a trailer will be approximately 50 feet their property. Oh, we've got a berm out there. When I bought that property, the people in the mobile homes, they use that for a trash dump. And had to get rid of all that stuff, and I buried most of it in the berm. <coughs> so that takes care of a lot of what he was asking. I just want to throw that in. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. Yes, sir. Got any more questions? Y'all, you've got a question. No, not that. Hey, we're good. Thank you, sir. No, if Mr. Gooby says that's consistent with other things, then, okay, that, that's good enough for me. Okay. As we have no other speakers, I will close this public comments. Um, I will come back and realize that what we're doing is making a motion on what we're gonna, that we were going to recommend this to the Board of Commissioners with our... Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to have some additional text added to this. <coughs> um, and it does um, regard lighting, that the lighting must be in the form of a down lighting um, and just to provide safety and security to the people who are parking their vehicles there and using the facility and not to shine excessive light out into the neighborhood. If I might add, Mr. Olson, the, our ordinance already does have that requirement for lighting. Okay. Um, the, any non-residential use has, if they're providing lighting, it has to be what they call a full cutoff light. So that means there's no light. No light can shine up above the light or the, the the equipment of the light and everything has to shine down and can't have any glare on the on surrounding properties so we do already have that so power. that's already taken care of yes sir great and what we'll do is when if the, if it's approved and they submit a site plan we'll also require a lighting plan that shows that perfect Good deal. thank you sir any other comments okay chair will entertain a motion i make a motion we take staff recommendation Second. Have a motion by Mr. Hardy and a second, uh, Mr. Forbes, that we do approve this request to move forward. All in favor of that motion, let it be known by raising the right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. <coughs> and like I said, just a reminder that is going to go back to the Commissioner on April 3rd. So to that'll go to the Commissioners for public hearing on April 3rd. Yes, sir. Okay. 
So our next amendment, this is actually a staff initiated amendment. Uh, this is really to address a couple of items that we've identified just for consistency purposes. Uh, also to clarify some things, um, just things that have popped up when we've been uh, enforcing the ordinance over the last couple of years. Uh, first is uh, just recently we realized that for landfill uses, um, there, what is in the, the use table is not consistent within with, with the development standards for those uses. So for landfill construction and demolition, uh, land clearing and inert debris, and sanitary and solid waste, those uses, when you look at their development standards in Section 8, it says they're required to have a conditional district, just like what we talked about with the, with the trucking and um, also with, you know, conditional district rezonings. So they are required, under, under those standards, it says they're required to have in all their districts. But we went back to the table and it said it was only required in the general industrial to meet development standards. So we're fixing this, our proposal is to fix it so that a landfill would have to get a conditional zoning district established in, in, in all those districts that they're permitted in. The second is uh, in regards to the skirting that we require on manufactured homes. Uh, currently, we require, once a mobile home is set up and it's approved for occupancy, so building inspection goes out, they do the final inspections on the setup, they issue a certificate of occupancy, issue an electrical certificate that gets the power cut on. The residents of that home have 60 days from that date to install the skirting around the bottom of the home. But what we're finding is that we are we're sort of we're spending a lot of time on those properties that don't come into compliance within 60 days to bring them into compliance. Typically it takes about one to three months to bring them into compliance. And it's about 13% of those homes that are approved that aren't in, in, uh, con in compliance at the, after 60 days. So we've talked with our inspections office. Um, they are in agreement that that underpinning could be checked and approved prior to that approval for occupancy. So when they go out and do their final inspections, that underpinning would have to be installed. They could remove a section so they can still get up under the house, uh, do the inspections they need to under there for the setup, and then replace that section get their CO, get occupied, and then we don't have to continually chase some of these folks uh, to get them into compliance. So for sections 8WW, again, we're proposing to remove that 60-day requirement. It'd be prior to approval for occupancy by Pitt County Inspections, and then also the same in the R40 district for manufactured homes. Uh, that underpinning would have to be installed prior to approval. We thought these amendments are also consistent with the goals of the county comprehensive land use plan, and staff does recommend also approval with an immediate effective date. Uh, the commissioners would be scheduled to hold a public hearing also for this on April 3rd, and we'd like to entertain any public comments. And I would ask at this time if there are any public comments. I'll open this session for public comments. Seeing none, we'll close this session of public comments. Board, your comments. You have a motion. Move to approve the uh, amended text as proposed. Second, Don Brown. Motion by Mr. Forbes, second by Mr. Brown. Uh, that we approve staff recommendation. Any comments from the board? All in favor of the motion, let it be known by raising the right hand. All opposed, like sign. The motion passes. Right, and the last item I have for you tonight, Mr. Chair, is just a <laughs> very quick update on our county land use plan, our proposed Envision Pitt County 2045 plan. Uh, as you remember, last month, uh, you held a public hearing, recommended approval for, um, for the plan. That plan is going to the Board of County Commissioners for adoption on Monday, so it's March 20th. And uh, following the discussion last month, we did go through and make some changes to the plan. There was, a lot, again, a lot of talk about the context sensitivity, adding some more recommendations for that. Uh, so we have added that. Uh, we've also added some graphics in terms of kind of showing the things you can consider, how things can be laid out. Um, 
So the things you can look at would be, you know, limit size limitations on buildings, non-residential, of course, um, things like additional buffering, um, transportation improvements, does that have to be coordinated with DOT? Uh, then it, any other kind of unique aspects of the site that need to be preserved, uh, frontage requirements, and then anything like with the parking and the location of that. And then also uh, some things to consider would be additional amendments to the zoning ordinance for, for adding some more requirements for some of these things to, to consider. Uh, and then also if we need to conduct any kind of training to educate the board, educate the commissioners or even the public or developers on how to consider these things, we can do that as well. And that's, that's all been included in the plan since, since that time. So with that, um, that final, what we consider the final draft of the plan is available online now. Uh, so you can go on there, review it. There's a place to leave comments. Um, glad to uh, answer any questions though. But uh, again, like I said, Monday, hopefully we will get an approval and get a new plan in place that we're looking at uh, May 1st. Any questions for Mr. Gibby from the board? Job well done. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rhodes. Yes, sir. Two things. Again, thank you for your service tonight. You guys have been champions in getting through this long agenda. And also, thank you for serving as our steering committee on the Envision Pitt County 2045. That is a remarkable plan. We hope that the commissioners do endorse that at our meeting on Monday night. Real quickly, uh, a couple of items. First, a good news item on page 87 of your agenda. Uh, we did retain our class eight community rating system. And what does that mean? That means uh, the county has put in measures, mitigation <coughs> measures and extra protection for folks that are locating businesses or homes in the floodplain. And in so doing that, uh, anyone that locates there and meets those requirements are eligible for a 10% reduction on the flood insurance per premium. So that's a good news item for those people that uh, decide to live in those flood prone areas, but they have to meet our extra protection. In particular, the two foot freeboard. So if the base flood elevation is at a certain level, the finished floor elevation has got to be at least two, two foot above that. So that's just one of the ideas that we put in place. And that was put in place about 20 years ago after Hurricane Floyd. Uh, a couple of other things I uh, did want to bring you up to date if you didn't see it um, that your conditional district rezoning for the group home that was proposed on NC 30 was denied by the board when they dealt with it on their February 20th meeting. And then the final item just so you know one of those hidden items or activities that our staff is involved with is E911 addressing we maintain the road signs. More importantly, we also update and add any new E911 addressing out in the unincorporated part of the county and all the municipalities except for the city of Greenville. So just one example, we do have to get involved with some road name changes from time to time. That was included in your package for the town of Farmville. Just an idea of some other activities that we're involved with. Some other informational items in there and again thank you for your service especially tonight that's all we've got mr chairman thank you mr roots james james i'd like to thank you and your department for going back with the field trips because it really has helped me when you're looking at something that you're going to set up here and talk about and make a decision so. Thank you for that, Mr. Hardy. And again, we invite everybody out. Uh, just we, we've got some other items coming to you next month. So if you have an opportunity to join us on the field trip, please uh, come along. We try to get you out there and back safely, number one, and as quickly as possible. So please join us if you get a chance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roos. Any comments from the board? Mr. Rose, let me just say again to you and to follow up what Mr. Hardy just had to say, I appreciate the work that you and your staff do. Appreciate everything you do. Uh, Mr. Mr. Smith, appreciate you, sir, being here. And I might recognize uh, one other young man there that I should know, so 
We're glad to have you. You've been a trooper tonight also. Thank you, sir. So I'm the assistant county attorney. Um, and so with Mr. Smith, I guess I'm I guess I'm pushing you for something here, aren't I? <laughs> um, I am. Uh, my time with the county is a little bit short. I'm going to be leaving at the end of April. Um, and so with that, Matt's been in my. Uh, is that right? Yes. End of April. <laughs> James was laughing at me, so I'm um, sorry. End of April. Uh, so Matt's been in my office for uh, almost a year now, and so he may or may not uh, be the face for y'all um, at the planning board going forward. Um, but. Um, Happy, um, been a pleasure working with y'all over the years, um, and I'm, I'll be here next month. Um, so, just off thank that. you again for yep. all you that you do for us. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. No other comments. This meeting is adjourned. Very good.